Ever wondered what shocking turns The Sopranos' cast lives have taken? Some faced the law, some were jailed, others quit acting, and a few skyrocketed to fame on TV and the big screen. And more importantly, hear the shocking stories of those who tragically passed away. Watch till the end for surprising cameos and personal life secrets you've never heard before. This is just part one of three, so hit subscribe and don't miss out. Before Robert Eiler was known as AJ Soprano, he made a cameo in a Marilyn Manson video that spoofed Willy Wonka. Post The Sopranos, Eiler's life seemed like a modern twist on a classic adventure tale, complete with high-stakes poker games and personal battles with addiction, which eventually led to a conditional sentence. These days, Eiler has put his tumultuous past behind him and has turned to podcasting, often bringing in former co-stars to share in the fun. His life after acting included a stint in the Las Vegas poker scene, and he humorously mentioned that his only acting post-Sopranos was pretending to avoid jury duty, earning him a cameo in Law & Order. In a candid 2020 interview, Eiler celebrated seven years of sobriety and discussed his new ventures, including co-hosting the Pajama Pants podcast with Jamie Lynn Sigler, which ran until December 2022. In July 2023, he embarked on a new podcast project with Siegler called Not Today Pal, continuing his journey in the world of digital media. So what, no f***ing's eating now? Hey! hey. Gandolfini's role as Tony Soprano not only thrust him into stardom, but also cemented his place among TV's elite, earning him three Emmy Awards and numerous nominations. His early career featured notable roles in films like True Romance, The Man Who Wasn't There, and Night Falls on Manhattan. Gandolfini excelled in a range of parts, enhancing major films like Zero Dark Thirty, The Drop, and intimate dramas like Enough Said. Tragically, Gandolfini died from a heart attack in 2013, just after filming the pilot for The Night Of, an HBO series later completed with John Turturro and warmly received upon its release. His passing prompted widespread tributes, including from New Jersey's governor and his hometown naming a street in his honor. In Vilnius, Gandolfini's legacy endures uniquely, a 15-foot statue of Tony Soprano at the train station, clad in shorts and a bathrobe. This tribute captures the spirit of his memorable character and continues to delight and inspire travelers, reflecting the lasting impact of a truly iconic actor. David Provel, an actor with a compelling presence, first grabbed the spotlight in the gritty 1973 film Mean Streets, directed by Martin Scorsese. This role set the stage for his enduring career in Hollywood. But how did he land on one of television's most acclaimed shows, The Sopranos? The competition for the role of Richie was fierce, and Provel was determined to secure the part at all costs. This determination not only won him the role, but also deeply influenced his portrayal, adding a layer of fierce intensity to Richie that became one of the character's defining traits. After captivating audiences on The Sopranos, Proval appeared in films like Smoke and Aces and Balls of Fury, showcasing his versatility in both dramatic and comedic roles. In 2018, Proval took on a lead role in the movie Papa, where he starred alongside Vincent Pastor, reuniting with a fellow Sopranos alum. Ever wondered what's new with Edie Falco? Well, she's been pretty busy lately, swapping her suburban mob queen digs for some decidedly more political attire. Currently, you can catch Edie portraying none other than Hillary Clinton in the third season of American Crime Story. This season dives deep into the notorious Monica Lewinsky scandal. Before stepping into the shoes of a former first lady, Falco led the cast of the CBS police procedural Tommy, where she played the first female police chief of L.A. Though it only lasted a season, it's worth noting her pioneering role. And just when you thought Edie couldn't get any cooler, she entered the world of Pandora. This year, we finally got the premiere of Avatar 2, where she stars as General Ardmore. And guess what? She's slated to appear in the next Avatar movie, too. Now imagine if she had returned to the world of The Sopranos in its recent spinoff. Guess what? She did. Or at least she tried. In a twist that's almost as dramatic as the show itself, her part was completely cut during editing. Before Ganascoli became known for his role on The Sopranos, he was mastering the culinary arts, cooking up dishes in New York City and New Orleans, and even opening his own eatery in Brooklyn. Unfortunately, gambling debts forced him to close his restaurant in 1990. However, Joe returned to the culinary world in 2017 with a catering business that specializes in Sopranos-themed events. Joe's acting career began with a fortunate meeting with Benicio Del Toro on the set of Money for Nothing, which led to a role in Del Toro's film Submission and introduced him to key Sopranos casting directors. His first appearance on The Sopranos was a minor role as a pastry shop patron, Gino. He returned to the show more prominently as Vito Spadafore, 
before, evolving from a one-episode character to a significant figure. Aside from The Sopranos, Joe has appeared in films like Men in Black 3 and An Act of War, and participated in culinary shows such as Bong Appetit, Cook Off, and 24 Hours to Hell and Back. Most recently, he was cast alongside Kate Bosworth in the pilot Bring on the Dancing Horses. Michael Imperioli, whose portrayal of the swaggering, erratic Christopher Moltisanti remains one of the series' most iconic roles. Before he was Tony's nephew, a role that won him an Emmy and two SAG Awards, Imperioli cut his teeth as Spider in Goodfellas. Since his days on The Sopranos, Imperioli has kept busy on both the small and big screens, often slipping into the shoes of various detectives in shows like Life on Mars, Lucifer, Blue Bloods, Mad Dogs, and Lincoln Rhyme, Hunt for the Bone Collector. He even portrayed a former New York governor in an episode of Ben Stiller's Escape at Dannemora and starred in season two of HBO's The White Lotus. Most nostalgically, he lent his voice as the narrator for The Many Saints of Newark. Adding to his repertoire, Imperioli co-hosted the Talking Sopranos podcast with former co-star Steve Shiripa. The dynamic duo also penned Woke Up This Morning, the definitive oral history of The Sopranos. Let's chat about Catherine Narducci, a.k.a. Charmaine Bucco, whose life could be a script from our beloved show. Born in Italian Harlem to a father with mafia connections, Catherine faced tragedy at age 10 when he was killed in a mob hit right in front of his bar. Fast forward to 1993, Catherine, initially at an audition to support her son, ended up landing her own role in A Bronx Tale, kicking off her acting career. She's probably best known to us as the no-nonsense Charmaine in The Sopranos, a role she held from 1999 until the show ended in 2007. But her career didn't stop with the series. She starred in gangster films like Chicago Overcoat, appeared in Clint Eastwood's Jersey Boys, and recently took on roles in The Irishman and Capone. In 2022, she played Anna Genovese in Alto Nights, directed by Barry Levinson. Ever thought about the core of the show? Those complex, riveting meetings with Dr. Melfi, portrayed by the talented Lorraine Bracco, truly defined the series. Their dynamic began in the pilot and soon became essential, weaving through the narrative right up to that classic Soprano-style open-ended finale. Before she stepped into Dr. Melfi's shoes, Bracco dazzled us in Scorsese's Goodfellas and other hits like Basketball Diaries and Hackers. Post-Sopranos, though, her presence in Hollywood seemed to wane, ironically going from the limelight to less prominent roles. But here's a fun fact. Bracco gave a nod to her iconic Sopranos character in BoJack Horseman, where she voiced a therapist, Dr. Janet. It's a subtle but clever homage, typical of the show's deep meta-humor. Beyond acting, Bracco isn't just about the screen. She's also into karate and even wrote a self-help book with a title so long you'd think deciphering it could be its own chapter. So, whether it's acting or writing, Bracco continues to surprise us, proving she's much more than just Dr. Melfi. Meet Arthur J. Nascarella, a man whose life reads like a script from a riveting drama series. Arthur's journey began in the United States Marine Corps, where he served for eight years, followed by a 21-year stint with the New York City Police Department. Transitioning from the force to the film industry, Arthur didn't just land roles. He defined them, particularly in several of Spike Lee's films, from New Jersey Drive to the politically charged Black Klansman. Arthur's versatility extends beyond Spike Lee projects. His varied filmography includes roles in the mobster film Witness to the Mob, the nightclub drama 54, and the thriller Enemy of the State. On television, he brings authenticity to every character, like Bruno the pizza shop owner in Showtime's Billions, reflecting his deep New York roots and knack for playing gritty roles. More recently, Arthur has appeared in Blue Bloods and Godfather of Harlem, where he continues to showcase his signature tough guy charisma. In an alternate reality, Steven Van Zandt could have been the iconic Tony Soprano. Surprisingly, despite having no prior acting experience, series creator David Chase initially envisioned him as the mob boss. However, HBO executives were skeptical, seeing this idea as too bold a leap. Not deterred, Chase created the character Silvio Dante specifically for Van Zandt, who ended up portraying Tony's slick, smooth-talking confidant with arguably the best hair in the show. Beyond his role in The Sopranos, Steven Van Zandt is a true rock star, a key member of Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band, and a successful music entrepreneur who founded his own label. He's also contributed musically to films, notably performing All Alone on Christmas for the Home Alone 2 soundtrack. From 2012 to 2014, Van Zandt starred in Lilyhammer, a series that mixed crime with Norwegian culture, and he even appeared in Scorsese's The Irishman as singer Jerry Vale. 
Adding to his diverse career, Van Zant recently released his memoirs, showcasing his multifaceted talents. Wait, just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. Anthony DeSando has made significant appearances across various TV shows and films. He's taken roles in L.A. Law, NYPD Blue, and Sex and the City. However, for Sopranos fans, he's unforgettable as Brendan Falone, known for his high ambitions and poor choices. DeSando's film career includes roles in Federal Hill and Beer League, and he even voiced Reggie in The Sopranos' Road to Respect. His notable film roles include performances in Dito Montiel's A Guide to Recognizing Your Saints and Fighting. He also appeared on Blue Bloods as Joey Ruskley, Detective Anthony Abetamarco's cousin. Off the screen, DeSando has a diverse skill set. He's married to actress Bridget Ryan and is a licensed massage therapist. Before Tony Sirico became the iconic Polly Walnuts on The Sopranos, his real life mirrored that of a classic gangster film. Starting his criminal career at just seven years old, Sirico amassed 28 arrests and spent 20 months in Sing Sing Prison, where he unexpectedly discovered his passion for acting. What do you hear? What do you say? This dramatic shift from real life mobster to actor is a story as compelling as any Hollywood plot. Interestingly, Sirico was almost cast as Uncle Junior on The Sopranos, but ended up portraying Polly Walnuts on one condition. His character would never become a rat. His varied filmography includes everything from Goodfellas to voicing Vinny the Dog and Family Guy, showcasing his versatile talent. In 2008, he even launched his own cologne, Paolo, named after his character. Tony Sirico passed away in 2022 at the age of 79, but he left behind a legacy of memorable performances that continue to resonate. Whether as a feared gangster or a beloved character actor, Sirico's life and career were as dynamic and impactful as the roles he played. Word to the wise. Remember Pearl Harbor. Sharon Angela made a lasting impression on The Sopranos fans as Rosalie April, the resilient widow who became a central figure in the show's sixth season. Angela's eclectic filmography includes indie films like Cabaret Maxine and The Hungry Ghosts, and she even ventured into Jim Jarmusch's world with Ghost Dog, The Way of the Samurai. On television, she has appeared in both Law and & Order and Law & Order Criminal Intent. Angela's creativity also extends to writing and directing. She co-wrote The Collection in 2005 and directed Made in Brooklyn in 2007. Video game fans might recognize her voice as Angie Pegorino in Grand Theft Auto 4. Additionally, Angela imparts her acting wisdom at Studio Dante, an NYC acting studio founded by her Sopranos co-star Michael Imperioli and his wife Victoria. Drea De Matteo's acting journey began with modest roles in films and TV cameos until her big break on The Sopranos. Initially, auditioning for a minor part, her undeniable charm won her the significant role of Adriana, Christopher Moltisanti's troubled partner. Adriana quickly became one of the standout characters, earning Drea a Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Supporting Actress in 2004. Following The Sopranos finale, Drea continued to thrive. She starred in Joey, the Friends spinoff, joined Desperate Housewives as Angie Bolin, and portrayed Wendy Case in Sons of Anarchy. Her recent roles include appearances in Shades of Blue and a recurring spot in A Million Little Things. Fans are in for a treat as Drea is set to star in Queen of Manhattan alongside David Provel, reuniting her with her Sopranos uncle. This project sparks curiosity about whether Richie will finally let her wear his iconic jacket. It's yours. <laughs> what is? It's the jacket. Carl has made significant strides in the entertainment industry, both as a writer and an actor. His writing credits are impressive, with contributions to series like FX, The Benz, CBS's Tommy featuring Edie Falco, and HBO's The Deuce. He's also worked on Netflix's The Chameleon with Terrence Winter and HBO's Vinyl, a project backed by the likes of Mick Jagger and Martin Scorsese. Beyond television, Carl authored Twisted Head, an Italian-American memoir, published by Random House, which draws from his own life, extending into his solo theater show. For fans of The Sopranos, Carl is best recognized as Little Polly Germani. You ought to know, sweetie. Interestingly, Carl was initially considered for the role of Ralph Cifaretto and even auditioned at Silver Cup Studios in front of David Chase and the show's producers. Despite not landing that role, Chase saw potential in Carl famously remarking, We love you! We're gonna find something for you! It's just not this! Chase stayed true to his word, casting Carl as Little Polly, a role that has become one of his most memorable. Now let's chat about Dominic the Chinese Godfather, a.k.a. Uncle June, a real renaissance man in the Mafia series. Beyond the tough exterior, Junior's got a musical side that shines, 
Remember his stunning performance in Season 3's finale? Yep, that was him, singing tenor and strumming the guitar. Dominic's path to stardom was anything but straightforward. From random theater gigs to dive bar performances, and even teaching guitar in rehab centers, he did it all. His break came with a role in East-West, quickly followed by an unforgettable part in The Godfather Part II, thanks to Coppola. And just like that, Dominic was on the map. At 93, he's still active, recently appearing in the NBC drama The Village and Boardwalk Empire. There's also talk of him starring in a remake of Umberto D, though details are scarce. Notably, in 2018, Dominic published the autobiography 12 Angels, the women who taught me how to act, live, and love. You hear about the Chinese godfather? He made them an offer they couldn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Al Sapienza, known for his role as Mikey, began his acting journey right after graduating from NYU, landing a spot in the Broadway musical Beatlemania as Ringo Starr. Inspired by the Beatles, since he first saw them on The Ed Sullivan Show in second grade, Al was already drumming in his own band by fifth grade. His passion for acting was ignited at age 12 after watching Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, setting him on a path toward the arts. After Beatlemania, Al moved to Los Angeles to study acting for 14 years. During this period, he appeared in films like Pretty Woman and Under Siege 2 and TV series such as Melrose Place and Falcon Crest. His big break came in 1999 with The Sopranos, which led to roles in Brotherhood, Person of Interest, and Prison Break. More recently, he's appeared in Suits, Jack Ryan, and films like The Big Short and Godzilla. He also portrayed Gil Clancy in the biopic Heart of a Lion. Currently, he's filming for season two of Reacher, continuing to thrive in his craft from New York to LA. Hey, Mikey, that's the boy. What boy is that, Tony? The one you sleep with. Oh. oh. Jamie Lynn Sigler, known to many as Meadow Soprano, has faced her own formidable challenges off-screen. Diagnosed with multiple sclerosis at just 20, she has navigated the complexities of life under the spotlight with resilience. Adding to her trials, she battled Lyme disease, contracted during the filming of the horror movie Campfire Stories, which temporarily impaired her mobility, and struggled with bulimia during her early career. Despite these hardships, Jamie Lynn has not only persevered but also flourished. She shared her journey in her autobiography, Wise Girl, What I've Learned About Life, Love, and Loss, providing insights into her struggles and triumphs. Jamie Lynn continued to entertain audiences with roles in Entourage, where she played a version of herself and guest appearances in shows like How I Met Your Mother. She found happiness in her personal life as well, marrying a professional baseball player and recently starred in the sitcom Beef House. Continuing her connection with The Sopranos, Jamie Lynn now co-hosts a podcast with Robert Eiler, who played her on-screen brother. Oops, I did it again. <laughs> Let's shine a light on a stellar talent from our favorite show, Robert Funaro. Raised in Brooklyn by his second-generation Italian parents, Funaro started his acting career on the dynamic stages of New York. But the magic began when he teamed up with James Gandolfini during a European tour of A Streetcar Named Desire. Funaro truly made his mark as Eugene Ponacorvo on The Sopranos, carving out a niche in the world of mob drama. Post-Sopranos, he snagged roles in The Sinner with Jessica Biel, Ray Donovan, and even worked under Martin Scorsese in HBO's Vinyl. Plus, who could forget his appearances in The Irishman and American Gangster? Through it all, Funaro credits his friend Gandolfini for always sending the elevator back down in true showbiz fashion. Well, you ought to know, sweetie. Oh. <laughs> What'd you say? Before Buscemi dazzled us as Tony Blundetto in The Sopranos, earning an Emmy nod, he was already familiar to fans as the director of the iconic Pine Barrens episode. But his journey started earlier, balancing a firefighting career from 1980 to 1984 with secret acting classes and stand-up gigs. Buscemi's versatility shines through his comedic roles alongside Adam Sandler in Mr. Deeds and his deeper performances in Tim Burton's Big Fish and Jim Jarmusch's Coffee and Cigarettes. He's also directed films like Lonesome Jim, Animal Factory, and starred in the drama Interview. On TV, he struck gold as Nucky Thompson in Boardwalk Empire, winning a Golden Globe and multiple nominations for his portrayal of the corrupt Atlantic City ruler during Prohibition. Buscemi isn't just about heavy roles. He's directed comedic episodes of Nurse Jackie and 30 Rock and created the Emmy-winning web series Park Bench with Steve Buscemi. Recently, in 2024, Buscemi was attacked in Manhattan, resulting in injuries, but he has since recovered, according to his publicist. You're out there acting like a free agent. Let's explore the intriguing dual life of Daniel Grimaldi, best known as the Parisi twins, who brought double the trouble and charm to the show. 
Outside his role in mob politics on screen, Daniel shapes young minds as a mathematics professor, a surprising twist to his character arc. Before his stint on The Sopranos, Daniel kick-started his acting career with fiery roles, notably as the unstable pyromaniac Donnie Kohler in the 1980 horror movie Don't Go in the House. Grimaldi's acting versatility extends beyond horror. He has appeared in films like the action-filled The Junk Man in 1983 and the gritty drama The Yards in 2000, where he played a slick executive. His diverse acting chops also shone through in multiple episodes of Law & Order during the 90s. Beyond film and TV, Daniel has ventured into video gaming, voicing Frank in the game Mafia. For fans looking for a more personal connection, Daniel offers personalized video messages via Memo Me. We understand each other. It won't be cinematic. Have you ever noticed Vincent Pastore is practically everywhere in mob movies? He's like the go-to guy for gangster roles. Although his gig on The Sopranos was short, lasting just two seasons, he left a memorable mark. Imagine if he'd snagged a no-snitching clause in his contract like Tony Sirico. Maybe we'd have seen more of him, but then we'd have missed that epic season two finale. Believe it or not, Vincent Pastore is a spry 77 years old, and he's not slowing down anytime soon. Nearly hitting 200 roles, he almost danced his way onto Dancing with the Stars in 2007, but decided his passion lay elsewhere. He's also ventured into the culinary world with his gourmet, Vinny Pastore's Italian Sauce. Made with fine Italian tomatoes, it's like a jar of Italy for your kitchen. Pastor's film roles include appearances in College Road Trip, Surviving Family, and Staten Island Summer. Recently, he starred in Vault and Bottom of the Ninth. On TV, he's been everywhere from Everybody Hates Chris to General Hospital, and now he's Fat Larry in Hulu's Wu-Tang, an American saga. Let's explore the career of Ray Abruzzo, famously known as Little Carmine on The Sopranos. Appearing in 16 episodes from 2002 to 2007, Ray left a memorable mark on the series with his distinct quotes and unique flair. His acting range extends beyond the mob genre, with notable roles as police sergeant John Zarelli on Dynasty in the late 80s and Detective Michael McGuire on The Practice from 1998 to 2004. Ray also charmed as Tony Giuliano on Night Court. Ray's versatility is evident across various TV shows, from portraying a cardiologist on Empty Nest to guest roles on NCIS and Mad Men. He also contributed behind the scenes as head writer and stage manager for Winerville, performing as the puppet chef, Pops. His stage presence is robust, with performances in Teresa Rebeck's Mauritius, the title role in Lombardi, and a starring role in Somebody Marry Me, the longest single-shot movie in American film history. For a personal touch, fans can book video messages from him on Memo.me. You're at the precipice, Tony, of an enormous crossroad. Remember Ada Turturro from the late 90s? She first grabbed our attention in films like Sleepers and Deep Blue Sea, but most of us know her best as Tony Soprano's dramatic, self-centered sister Janice in The Sopranos. Interestingly, she's also the cousin of actor and filmmaker John Turturro. Since her days causing chaos in Jersey, Ada hasn't slowed down. She's made a splash on the small screen, with notable stints on Law & Order from 2013 to 2023, where it seems law enforcement just can't get enough of her. In 2021, she appeared as Gail in the TV series what We Do in the Shadows, and she also took a turn on The Blacklist, swapping her underworld ties for a badge, in a sense. It's amusing to see Ada's transformation from the mob's first family to aiding the good guys. Maybe she's playing both sides, or perhaps she's just gathering intel for a Soprano family reunion. Either way, Ada Turturro continues to captivate audiences with her versatile acting chops. Max Casella's career spans from his early days in Disney's Newsies and as Vinnie Del Pino in Doogie Howser, Maryland to prominent roles on both screen and stage. Born in Washington and raised in Cambridge, Casella's early exposure to journalism through his father's work at the Boston Globe helped shape his expressive capabilities. On TV, he's best known for his role as Benny Fazio in The Sopranos and has made notable appearances in Vinyl, Boardwalk Empire, and The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. He recently added depth to Tulsa King, exploring themes of crime and redemption. His film roles include performances in The Rhythm Section, alongside Blake Lively, Jackie with Natalie Portman, and Woody Allen's Blue Jasmine with Kate Blanchett. Casella made his Broadway debut as Tymon in Julie Taymor's The Lion King, and has continued to engage with the stage in productions like Ethan Cohen's A Play is a Poem and The Kid Stays in the Picture in London. Beyond acting, Max has ventured into writing and illustrating, drawing from his own experiences. You want some more? Nancy Marchand, celebrated for her versatility, began her acting journey in theater, honing her skills in various prestigious stage productions. 
This classical training laid the groundwork for her successful transition to television and film. Marchand became a well-known TV figure through her role as Margaret Pynchon in Lou Grant, earning four Emmy nominations and paving the way for her casting in The Sopranos. In this iconic series, she brilliantly portrayed Livia Soprano, the manipulative matriarch, showcasing her ability to play complex, authoritative characters. However, Marchand's career was overshadowed by health challenges. She battled lung cancer and emphysema while working on The Sopranos. Tragically, she passed away in 2000, just a day before her 72nd birthday. Her final appearances on The Sopranos were crafted using digital effects and earlier footage, ensuring her character received a fitting conclusion. Johnny was a saint. Vincent, cherished especially by fans of gangster films, had an eclectic career that began in the world of music. Initially, he aspired to make it big in the music industry, playing by day as a studio musician and by night leading his jazz band. But destiny had other plans for him. In 1969, an incidental hiring of Joe Pesci as a guitarist for his band led to a shift in Vincent's career. As the popularity of lounge music waned, Vincent and Pesci transitioned to comedy, forming the duo Vincent and Pesci. Their stand-up comedy caught the attention of influential figures, leading to a role in the gangster film The Death Collector, which caught the eye of De Niro. Impressed, De Niro recommended them to Scorsese, who cast Vincent in Raging Bull. This marked the beginning of several collaborations, including standout roles in Goodfellas and Casino. While Vincent enjoyed a variety of roles, including in Spike Lee's films, it was his portrayal of Phil Leotardo in The Sopranos that profoundly resonated with audiences. In September 2017, Vincent suffered a heart attack and passed away shortly after open heart surgery at the age of 80. Your brother Billy, whatever happened there? All right, Ted. Whatever uh -huh. happened there? Federico Castelluccio, a.k.a. Furio, has remained active in the entertainment industry, notably appearing in the 2006 film A Guide to Recognizing Your Saints and directing The Brooklyn Banker in 2016. Beyond acting, Federico has made his mark as a realist painter and an astute art collector. His keen eye led him to discover a lost masterpiece in 2010, which he bought for $43,000 and later sold for a stunning $6 million. Perhaps the best whack job he's done since leaving The Sopranos. Adding a twist to his career, Castelluccio made an appearance in Nickelback's music video for Rockstar. Now, I know what you're thinking. What's a guy from the rugged streets of Naples doing in a Nickelback video? Maybe he's lost, or maybe he's there for the boss's money. The boss money. Let's hope Federico ripped Nickelback off for a G note. If you're ripping us off for a G note, this is bullshit. Born in Queens to Sicilian immigrants and raised in Teaneck, New Jersey, John Ventimiglia grew up in a household where Sicilian was the language of love. Not just a star in school for his brains and brawn on the football field, he roomed with Michael Imperioli, our very own Christopher Moltisanti, during the vibrant 80s in the East Village. Famously known as Chef Artie Bucco on The Sopranos, he didn't hang up his acting gloves post the show. He starred in NBC's Blue Bloods, and even solved mysteries in CBS' The Good Wife and Netflix's Jessica Jones. Life off-screen has had its shares of ups and downs. He's a family man, married with a daughter and a granddaughter, but faced tragedy with the loss of his youngest daughter in 2023. Through all life's seasons, our guy continues to inspire both on and off the screen. Here's to hoping he's got more stories to share. For us, he'll always be the chef who can handle the heat, no matter where it comes from. It's like a martini, but it's from Albania. I never heard of that. Well, apparently they go down real easy. Gregory Antonacci was a multifaceted talent from Hell's Kitchen, Manhattan, leaving a mark across directing, producing, writing, and acting. He contributed significantly behind the camera on TV series like Perfect Strangers, The Royal Family, and more, enhancing each with his knack for storytelling and humor. Antonacci also excelled in front of the camera. He is remembered for his roles in The Rockford Files and Busting Loose, and for playing Tony Minucci in Making It. His portrayal of Butchie in The Sopranos and Johnny Torrio in Boardwalk Empire showcased his ability to embody tough, authoritative characters drawing from his Hell's Kitchen roots. In theater, Antonacci was active with the La Mama Experimental Theater Club in the 70s, contributing as a playwright, actor, and director. Greg Antonacci passed away in September 2017 in Massapequa, New York, just a week after Frank Vincent, his co-star from The Sopranos. Before he was Johnny Sack, Vincent Curatola swung a hammer more than he memorized lines with only a couple of minor acting gigs under his belt. It's almost poetic, isn't it? A guy from construction playing a major role in a series where the mob's ties to the building trades are a key plot point. 
Now, Vincent's entry into the world of acting was anything but typical. When it came time to audition for The Sopranos, he wasn't exactly punctual or keen, often showing up late or missing auditions altogether. It's hard to imagine that kind of laid-back attitude in the cutthroat world of auditions where every moment counts. But here's where it gets interesting. Vincent stood out not by raising his voice, but through his chilling calmness and a peculiar way of smoking a cigarette that captured the producer's attention. Beyond The Sopranos, Vincent's appeared in films like Killing Them Softly and Patriot's Day and TV shows from Monk to The Blacklist. And for those who might want a dash of his dramatic flair, Curatola now teaches acting, offering lessons to both veterans and novices alike, even through Zoom. What's this, the f***ing you in now? Steve Shirapa, known for his role as Bobby, has continued to thrive in the industry since the series concluded. He has displayed his acting versatility with roles on Blue Bloods and as Leo Boykwich in The Secret Life of the American Teenager. His other TV appearances include Stargate Atlantis, Ugly Betty, and voice roles in American Dad. Shirapa has also shared the big screen with his Sopranos co-stars in films like The Hungry Ghosts and Jersey Boys, and recently in Woody Allen's Wonder Wheel alongside Tony Sirico. In addition to acting, Shirapa is a successful author. His publications include A Goomba's Guide to Life and the Nicky Deuce series, which inspired a TV movie featuring several Sopranos alumni. On a personal note, Steve is happily married to Laura Lemos since 1989, and they have two daughters. Currently, he enriches the Sopranos fandom with behind-the-scenes insights through the Talking Sopranos podcast, co-hosted with Michael Imperioli. You know, Quasimodo predicted all this. Joe Pantoliano first grabbed attention as the killer pimp in Risky Business and then as the notorious Francis Fratelli in The Goonies. He truly bent minds as Cypher in The Matrix and won an Emmy for his role as Ralph Cifaretto on The Sopranos. Beyond these iconic roles, Joe has shown versatility, from playing a sharp-tongued bail bondsman in Midnight Run alongside De Niro to the authoritative Captain Conrad Howard in The Bad Boys Saga. He also shown as a double-crossed mafioso in Bound, and as the clever, tormented John Teddy Gamble in Memento. Off-screen, Joe's life is equally vibrant. After his first marriage ended in 1985, he remarried former model Nancy Shepard in 1994, and they have four children. Pantoliano's personal battles have also been public. He's openly discussed his struggles with alcoholism, food, sex addiction, and depression, which he explores in his memoirs. Despite challenges like a serious injury from a 2020 accident that left him with a concussion and chest trauma, Pantoliano remains resilient. Speaking of 98 pounds, I hear Jenny Sachs getting a 95-pound mold taken off her ass. Lilo Brancato Jr., famous for his role as Matthew Bevilacqua in The Sopranos, had a life as tumultuous off-screen as on. Discovered at Jones Beach for his De Niro impersonation, Brancato got his break in a Bronx tale. However, his real life took a darker path. In 2005, Brancato was arrested twice for drug use, and in December that year, he was involved in a botched robbery where a police officer was fatally shot. Brancato was wounded, arrested, and later acquitted of second-degree murder, but convicted of attempted robbery, earning a 10-year sentence. In court, he apologized tearfully, but the officer's sister dismissed it as an Oscar-worthy performance. After his parole in 2013, Brancato struggled to revive his acting career. In 2018, he starred in the autobiographical documentary Wasted Talent. Now 48, Brancato lives in Yonkers, aids those battling addiction, and serves as the director of public relations at More Life Recovery Center. He's also penning a screenplay titled Never Meet Your Heroes, exploring themes of addiction and recovery, co-starring Terrell Hicks. Brancato is now determined to turn his troubled past into a force for good. Juliana Margulies is a renowned American actress best known for her TV drama roles. Born in Spring Valley, New York, Margulies is the youngest of three daughters. Her parents, Francesca and Paul, were Jewish with European roots and divorced when she was a year old. Initially considering law, she found her passion in acting. Her career includes roles in The Mists of Avalon, The Hot Zone, and The Morning Show, as well as films like Dinosaur, Ghost Ship, and The Upside. Notably, she played Juliana Skiffle, a realtor, in four episodes of The Sopranos in 2006, becoming romantically involved with Christopher Moltisanti. Personally, I also remember Juliana for her part in The Lost Room, where she played one of the leading roles. Margulies' breakthrough came with ER, where her character was kept alive due to positive audience feedback. After leaving ER, she explored theater in various projects before starring in The Good Wife. She published her memoir in 2021 
and continues to be a significant figure in the entertainment industry. If you've ever wondered about the guy behind Agent Harris, well, you've come to the right place. Matt Servito first hit the screen as Trask Bodine on All My Children back in 1989. If soap operas had an MVP award, he'd have nabbed it with his nine-episode stint. But it was his role on The Sopranos that really got him noticed. From 1999 to 2007, he played Agent Dwight Harris, the FBI guy who goes from busting mobsters to sort of helping them out. His role may have started small, but by the sixth season, he was crucial to the story. Servito's career is like a TV marathon that just keeps getting better. He's played roles like Deputy Brock Lotus on Banshee and Satan himself in the Adult Swim series, Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell. He also had a notable role on Brotherhood as Representative Donatello. And let's not forget his movie appearances. He was in Hitch with Will Smith and voiced Sam in the 2002 video game, Mafia. During the pandemic, Servito didn't just sit around binge-watching shows like the rest of us. He directed and starred in a horror western called A Town Called Purgatory. Damn, you're gonna win this thing. Born March 29, 1960, Annabella Sciorra hit the big time with True Love in 1989 and stayed busy in the 90s with Jungle Fever, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, Copland, and What Dreams May Come. But for us, she'll always be Gloria Trillo from The Sopranos. She also played Detective Carolyn Barrick on Law and & Order, Criminal Intent, and had roles on Glow and Truth Be Told. Her Emmy-nominated role in The Sopranos was a game-changer. She appeared in Find Me Guilty and on shows like Queen Supreme, Mental, The L Word, ER, The Good Wife, and Blue Bloods. In 2018, she joined the Marvel Universe in Luke Cage and Daredevil and recently appeared in New Amsterdam, Godfather of Harlem, and Tulsa King. On the personal side, Ciora was married to actor Joe Petruzzi from 1989 to 1993. She dated Bobby Cannaval from 2004 to 2007. It won't be cinematic. Sopranos fans will recognize Paul Schultz as Father Phil, the priest with some interesting habits. On TV, he made a mark as Ryan Chappelle on 24 from 2001 to 2004 and as Father Phil on The Sopranos from 1999 to 2006. He's popped up in a ton of shows. Law & Order, Rizzoli and & Isles, CSI, The West Wing, Oz, Frasier, The Closer, and Suits, just to name a few. In 2017, he brought William Rollins to life in Netflix's The Punisher. On the big screen, Schultze has been in New Jersey Drive, Clockers, and David Fincher's Panic Room and Zodiac. He also played Michael Burnett in the 2008 Rambo film. If you watched Nurse Jackie, you'll remember him as Eddie Walzer, the pharmacist who knows all of Jackie's secrets. Starting out as a carpenter on film sets in the late 70s, Joseph Badalucco Jr. worked on Woody Allen classics like Annie Hall and Manhattan. Pretty cool, right? Badalucco expanded his skills into set dressing and then props, working on major films like The Godfather Part Three and The Good Shepherd. In the 90s, Badalucco made the leap into acting. He had minor roles in films like Godzilla and The Siege. But if you're a fan of The Sopranos, you'll know him best as Jimmy Altieri, one of The Sopranos' early rats, who failed to call for help on his radio mic. Badalucco also had a recurring role as Detective Jelly Grimaldi on Third Watch. His TV work didn't stop there. He appeared in shows like The Black Box and The Night Of. Beyond acting, his career as a set dresser and property master saw him contribute to a wide range of projects. From the blockbuster Godzilla to the gritty The Taking of Pelham 123, Badalucco's behind-the-scenes work helped shape the look and feel of many films. Punk-ass piece of Would you forget our captain? Let's chat about Jerry Adler, who brought Herman Hesch Rabkin to life on The Sopranos. Adler's career spans theater, film, and TV. You've seen him in Manhattan Murder Mystery and The Good Wife. Sopranos fans know him as Hesh, Tony Soprano's confidant. Adler's entertainment roots run deep with his dad managing the group theater and his great uncle, a Yiddish theater legend. Imagine growing up with that legacy. Beyond Hesh, he's been Mr. Wicker on Mad About You, Bob Saget's dad on Raising Dad, Toby Ziegler's father on The West Wing, and Fire Chief Feinberg on Rescue Me. In film, he shined in In Her Shoes, Prime, and A Most Violent Year. From 2017 to 2019, he played Moshe Pfefferman on Transparent and appeared on Broad City and Living With Yourself. Jerry Adler is 95 and still going strong. what I tell you? Hold on to your cock when you negotiate with these desert people. Robert Loggia grew up in the Little Italy neighborhood of Staten Island. He initially studied journalism but switched to acting and studied with the famous Stella Adler. Loggia started acting in the 50s and made a name for himself in Hollywood with roles in classics like Scarface. He even snagged an Oscar nomination for his role in Jagged Edge and won a Saturn for Big. But let's focus on why you're here. His role in The Sopranos. 
Playing Feech LaMana, Logia brought a mix of old-school wise guy grit and charm. Feech was that guy who tried to reclaim his turf after being paroled, only to butt heads with Tony. And who can forget that intense scene where Soprano sends a boring 747 back to the can? Before Feech, Loja had a prolific career with roles in films like An Officer and A Gentleman and Independence Day. He even made a name for himself on TV with shows like Emerald Point NAS, Mancuso FBI, and Queen Supreme. Logia was known for his gravelly voice. On a personal note, Robert married twice and had three children. Tragically, he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and passed away in 2015. Born on November 2, 1977 in Yonkers, New York, Jason Serbone started acting early. By age four, he was in a Sesame Street commercial. By seven, he was with the Ford Modeling Agency, appeared in Bon Jovi's Silent Night music video, and starred in Suzanne Vega's Luca. He attended Sacred Heart High School and earned a biology degree from Concordia College. Despite a potential science career, acting drew him back. We best know him as Jackie April Jr. on The Sopranos, a role that ended tragically but remains memorable. He also appeared on Law & Order, Cloverfield, and won Best Play at the Players Theater with Merging, later made into a film. Jason kept busy with roles in Blue Bloods, CSI New York, Third Watch, Shades of Blue, and The Taking of Pelham 123. On the personal side, Jason married Beth Serbone in 2004, and they have two children together. So, while he's often playing tough guys on screen, it looks like he's a family man at heart. Out of respect to my father. Meet Richard Maldone, who brought Ally Boy to life on The Sopranos. If you thought his on-screen character was intriguing, wait till you hear about Maldone's real-life escapades. Maldone's real-life rap sheet is quite the saga. We're talking assault, grand larceny, forgery, and possession of stolen property. And in a twist worthy of The Sopranos, Maldone was handed a hefty 15-year sentence for selling ketamine. But like any seasoned wise guy, he managed to dodge those charges, leaving us all wondering if he had a real-life conciliar advising him. Before he was Albert Burris, Maldone had some memorable roles. He started out as Joey Zasa's bodyguard in The Godfather 3 and appeared in Analyze That and Wannabes. Even though his last TV appearance was in 2006, Maldone didn't disappear into the shadows. In a move that surprised many, he auditioned for the role of Johnny Dio in Scorsese's The Irishman. At the moment, Richard keeps communicating with fans at various Sopranos festivals and also performs as a DJ at numerous fancy parties. Let's wish him luck in all his endeavors. Can you imagine that? You get a facelift one week later you're in jail? Born in 1930, Tony Lip left quite a mark in the world of crime dramas. Most notably, he played the formidable boss Carmine Lupertazzi in The Sopranos. But Lip's mobster credentials don't stop there. He portrayed real-life mobsters Philip Giacconi and Donnie Brasco and Francesco Manzo in Goodfellas. Tony was born in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, but his family moved to the Bronx when he was just a baby. Growing up, he earned the nickname Lip because he could talk anyone into anything. Before the bright lights of Hollywood, Lip served in the U.S. Army, stationed in West Germany. Post-military, he worked at the Copacabana. It was there that he met Coppola, leading to a small role in The Godfather. His early 60s gig as the driver and bodyguard for classical pianist Don Shirley was brought to life in the film Green Book. Lip's personal life was centered in Paramus, New Jersey, where he lived with his wife, Dolores, until her passing in 1999. Lip himself passed away in 2013 at the age of 82. Though the cause of death wasn't disclosed, he had been in poor health for some years. Don doesn't wear shorts. Let's talk about Sophia Milos, the fierce Kimura boss Annalisa Zuka from The Sopranos. Born on September 27, 1969, in Switzerland, Sophia blends Italian and Greek heritage. She moved to Rome as a child and won a beauty pageant at 14, later becoming Junior Lady Italy. Fluent in seven languages, Sophia initially studied business in Switzerland before pursuing acting at the Beverly Hills Playhouse. She debuted in the independent film Inside Out and NBC's comedy Cafe American. Her standout role was Annalisa Zucca on The Sopranos a charismatic mob boss who challenged Tony Soprano, earning her international acclaim. She also starred as Yelena Salas on CSI Miami and appeared in Curb Your Enthusiasm, Mad About You, and ER. Recently, she featured in Project Blue Book and starred as Bianca Lagarda in The Border, earning a nomination at the Monte Carlo International Television Festival. Now she's in Gravesend and has roles in Chicago Justice and Criminal Minds Beyond Borders. I'm asking you nice. Or what? Let's talk about Michael Kelly, who Sopranos fans might remember as Agent Goddard. Born in 1969 in Philadelphia, he later grew up in Lawrenceville, Georgia. With Irish and Italian roots, Kelly has a rich cultural background, thanks to his parents, Maureen and Michael. 
He initially planned to study law at Coastal Carolina University, but had a change of heart after taking an acting class, leading him to graduate and performing arts in 1992. Michael Kelly's career is impressive. He's probably best known for his role as the fiercely loyal Doug Stamper in Netflix's House of Cards. But let's not forget his stint as CIA agent Mike November and Jack Ryan. Besides these, he's got a solid filmography with movies like Changeling, Dawn of the Dead, and Now You See Me. His TV resume doesn't stop there. He was in the miniseries Generation Kill and the series Criminal Minds Suspect Behavior. Plus, he took on the role of Dr. Edgar Dumbarton in Taboo. Michael lives in New York City with his wife Karen, whom he married in 2005, and their two kids. When he's not acting, he's busy being a musician and keeping fit. Meet Tony Darrow, who played Larry Burris on The Sopranos. But his real story is just as captivating. Born Anthony Borghese, Darrow grew up in Brooklyn, where he crossed paths with notorious figures like John Gotti and Paul Vario. Vario, a Lucchese capo, was famously convicted after Henry Hill's testimony, as seen in Goodfellas. Before acting, Tony was a lounge singer in the Catskills. His nightclub connections, thanks to Vario, led to his acting break. He first appeared as a mobster in Street Trash, catching Scorsese's eye and landing a role in Goodfellas as Sonny, the bamboo lounge owner. He also starred in Kill the Irishman, Analyze This, and Mickey Blue Eyes. In 2011, Tony found himself in a real-life drama when he pleaded guilty to involving Gambino family members in resolving a debt. He was staring down a potential three-year prison stint, but ended up with six months of house arrest and two years of probation. He emerged from this ordeal claiming to have learned his lesson. But in the world of wise guys, we know it's never that simple. Darrow is currently starring in the TV series Gravesend alongside Chaz Palminteri and Sofia Milos. Have you heard about Michelle Santo Pietro? If you're a Sopranos fan, you'll know her as Jojo, the wife of mob soldier Mikey, who got too attached to his suit. But Michelle's talents don't stop there. She's appeared on Law & Order, SVU, Sex and the City, and CBS's New York News. In film, Michelle starred in Two Family House with Michael Rispoli and Kelly McDonald. You might also remember her from The Donner Party and American Violence. And her voice? It's been featured in countless commercials, video games, and promos. Did you know Michelle was a child prodigy? She scored high on IQ tests and won the Yale Peabody Museum Award. Born in Sicily and raised in Queens and Boston, Michelle was also a nationally ranked cross-country runner and a classically trained opera singer. Michelle's performed in over 100 plays on and off Broadway, and she's also done stand-up and improv in Boston and New York. Plus, she's an award-winning screenwriter with accolades from Beverly Hills and New York competitions. Go take a mitol. Let's chat about Joe Maruzzo, an actor you might recognize from his memorable role in The Sopranos. But there's more to Joe than just his acting career. Did you know he's also a skilled writer with works featured in the best American short plays? Joe Maruzzo's career spans over 35 years, encompassing film, TV, and theater. His talent for playwriting has earned him recognition. He even won the Best Short Screenplay Award at the 2018 Queens Film Festival for his adaptation of Bricklayer's Poet. And the best part? He's currently working on two full-length features. You might have spotted Joe in various TV shows like 21 Jump Street, NYPD Blue, Law & Order, Star Trek, Blue Bloods, and of course, The Sopranos. His versatility on screen is truly impressive. In The Sopranos, Joe Maruzzo portrayed Joe Peeps, a soldier in the Lupertazzi crime family. Although his stint on the show was brief, we know a few things for sure. Joey Peeps' surname was Pepperelli, he loved golf, and he had an eye problem. What's the matter, Joey? You got a eye problem? Now let's talk about Leslie Ray Bega, who you'll remember as the fiery Valentina La Paz. Born in 1967 in Los Angeles, Leslie boasts a diverse heritage, with her father being Sephardi Jewish and her mother Russian Jewish. This cultural mix meant she grew up speaking English, Spanish, and French. Leslie's acting career began early, making her Broadway debut at just six years old. However, her big break came in the late 80s when she landed the role of Maria on Head of the Class. Then came The Sopranos, where she added spice to the series as Valentina, Tony Soprano's fiery mistress, who had an unusual tendency to prank her boyfriends. Beyond The Sopranos, Leslie showcased her versatility with roles such as Leah on CSI and appearances in films like Lost Highway and Mobsters. However, Leslie's talents extend beyond acting. She's also a gourmet chef, having served as a master chef in Santa Monica before launching her own dessert line. But that's not all. She's a real estate powerhouse in Beverly Hills, featuring on reality shows like Million Dollar Listing and Selling LA. It was a joke, hon. There's nothing funny about it. 
Joseph Saravo was a talented American actor best recognized for his portrayal of Johnny the Saint Soprano, Tony's father, in The Sopranos. His career took off with a notable performance as Vinny Tagliolucci in Carlito's Way, where he played a vengeful character opposite Al Pacino's Carlito. In 1999, he landed the role in The Sopranos that cemented his status in the mob genre. Beyond The Sopranos, Saravo enjoyed a diverse and dynamic career. He performed over 2,000 times as Angelo DiCarlo in the national tour of Jersey Boys, and he took on the roles of John Gotti in The Wannabe and Gene Gotti in Witness to the Mob. His television credits included appearances in The Blacklist, Blue Bloods, and The People v. O.J. Simpson, where he portrayed Fred Goldman. Joseph's filmography extended to movies like Made in Manhattan and Enchanted, and he lent his voice to characters in The Wild. On television, he appeared as Cardinal Mancini in New Amsterdam and John A. Rizzo in The Report. Tragically, Saravo passed away in 2021 at the age of 66 due to cancer. If you're a Sopranos aficionado, then you're surely familiar with Louis Lombardi's role as Agent Skip Lapari. Lombardi, a Bronx native with a knack for tough guy roles, delivered a performance as Lapari that perfectly embodied the relentless no-nonsense federal agent tasked with keeping Tony Soprano and his crew in check. Before The Sopranos, Lombardi had already made a name for himself with a range of roles that highlighted his versatility. From his memorable turn as Edgar Stiles, the lovable computer whiz on 24, to a slew of appearances in films like The Usual Suspects and Natural Born Killers, Lombardi has shown he can handle both intense drama and quirky comedy with equal finesse. His ability to transition from the street-smart federal agent in The Sopranos to a tech-savvy analyst in 24 underscores his wide-ranging talent. But Lombardi's talents don't end with acting. He's also taken on writing and directing with notable projects like the indie film Doughboys, which he shot in his hometown of the Bronx. Yeah, who the f are you, you mother Let's dive into the life of Frank Pellegrino Sr., a name that resonates with fans of gangster dramas. Initially, Frank pursued a career as a nightclub and cruise ship singer, but in a twist of fate, his aunt pulled him into the family business in 1972. Frank started working at Rao's, the famous Southern Italian restaurant, and ended up staying for nearly 50 years. Known as Frankie No for his strict door policy, he made Rao's one of the most exclusive dining spots around. Frank's big break came in 1990 when Scorsese cast him as Johnny Dio in Goodfellas. From there, Frank appeared in various films like Woody Allen's Manhattan Murder Mystery and the Italian American drama Tarantella. Fans of The Sopranos remember him best as FBI Chief Frank Cubitoso, a role he played from 1999 to 2007. Frank also featured in gangster films such as 18 Shades of Dust and Knock Around Guys. Frank also ventured into comedy with roles in Searching for Bobby D and Delivering the Goods. Sadly, Frank passed away from lung cancer in 2017 at the age of 72. Meet Armin Garo, a man who transformed from a rebellious kid in upstate New York to a respected actor. Armin's early school days were rough, leading his parents to enroll him in Albany Academy for some military discipline. It paid off. He graduated magna cum laude from Emerson College in 1977. In 1978, Armin became the New England heavyweight kickboxing champion and ranked among the top karate fighters by 1982. However, he switched gears and joined the East Providence Police Department in 1985, climbing the ranks and earning degrees in criminal justice but acting was always in his blood. He got his first taste in The Great Who Done It and later starred in Federal Hill. Sopranos fans know him best as Coco, but he's also appeared in The Departed, Dexter New Blood, Friends and Romans, The Wolf of Wall Street, American Hustle, and many more. Today, he's with Sita Azarian, a Broadway performer his parents would have adored. Armin's message to young people is clear. Pay attention to your parents and teachers, hone your skills, and pursue what you truly love. Yeah, you got a little cream on your mouth there, sweetie. Be happy to add to it. Let's chat about a music legend who's been around the block a few times, Frankie Valli. Growing up in a tight-knit Italian family, Valli was inspired to sing after seeing Frank Sinatra. Frankie's falsetto wasn't just a gimmick, it was pure magic. His career wasn't just about music, though. Valley dabbled in acting, popping up in Miami Vice, and of course, The Sopranos, as mobster Rusty Milio, famously known as the mayor of Munchkinland. In 2005, Jersey Boys, the musical about Valley and the Four Seasons, hit Broadway. It was a smash, winning Tony Awards and making Valley a household name all over again. The show even became a movie directed by Clint Eastwood, though Valley had mixed feelings about the casting. Valley's personal life had its ups and downs. He's been married four times and faced the tragic loss of two daughters. But through it all, he's kept singing. Even today, you might catch him on tour. By the way, Frankie Valli is only 90 years old. He's just a kid. Stand up guys like that. They're a dying breed. Let's talk about Michael Rispoli. 
the guy who brought the unforgettable Jackie April Sr. to life. Rispoli made his film debut in Household Saints as Nicky Falconetti, a soldier struggling to adjust to civilian life after the war. He followed this up with a strong performance in Angie, alongside Gina Davis. But let's not forget his work on The Sopranos. As Jackie, he was the original boss whose death set off a chain of events that shaped the entire show. Many fans are still wondering what would have happened if Jackie had survived and continued to run The Soprano family. What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments. Off screen, Michael has been married to Madeline Crawford since 1993, and they have three children. When he's not playing tough guys, he's a family man. You've also seen him in movies like Rounders, Summer of Sam, Pain and Gain, and shows like The Offer, Billions, and Godfather of Harlem. The kids with that truck, they make restitution to Junior. Done. Let's talk about John Bianco, a true Brooklyn native and a guy who brings that authentic New York vibe to every role he plays. With his sister Donna Bianco being a decorated NYPD sergeant, John's got some serious law enforcement knowledge in his blood. He honed his acting chops at prestigious NYC schools like HB Studios, mastering the Meisner technique. He also dipped his toes into directing, editing, and cinematography at Film Video Arts, but acting has always been his first love. You probably know John best as Jerry Torciano from The Sopranos. Beyond on The Sopranos, Bianco's talent has landed him recurring roles on popular TV shows like Law & Order, Daredevil, and Gotham. He's also set to appear as Petey Pepsid, a capo in the Guardo crime family, in the new spinoff of Law & Order, Organized Crime. On the big screen, Bianco's credits include The Irishman, The Brooklyn Banker, Friends and Romans, and The Clean, starring Adrian Brody. John Bianco also directed TV specials and shows, including Black Athletes, Fact and & Fiction, and Memory... Remember Patty, the striking blonde actress who brought the fierce lady Shylock Lorraine Caluso? Patty's journey began in quite a unique way. Andy Warhol discovered her while she was a teen DJ and cast her in his underground film Flesh. Not a bad start, right? At just 16, she took her career to France and appeared in films like La Maison and The Crazy American Girl. Back in the States, Patty kept busy with roles in Rancho Deluxe, Time After Time, and the main event where she played Ryan O'Neill's girlfriend. She also appeared in Modern Problems and Real Genius, but her most intense role was portraying Kathy Evelyn Smith, Belushi's candy girl, in Wired. Her personal life? Equally fascinating. In the late 60s, while modeling in London, she dated singer Cat Stevens. Patty also had a relationship with Don Johnson from, and they have a son. She's been married three times, spending a decade in France and becoming fluent in French. Now 73 years old, Patty is half retired from acting, having had small roles in TV shows like Sinner and Billions over the past few years. Hey, Sopranos fans, let's dive into the life of Frank Albanese, the man who traded his boxing gloves for the limelight after a brain injury forced him out of the ring. Picture this, it's 1968, and Albanese scores his first role in the mob drama, The Brotherhood. It was a small part, but it kick-started his four-decade-long career in mafia-themed films. Here's the juicy part for Sopranos aficionados. Albanese had roles in both The Godfather and The Godfather Part 3 as two different characters. He fondly recalled, In The Godfather, I was the hitman who burst into the room and shot the guy and girl in bed. And in The Godfather 3, I was the Grand Marshal leading the parade before a big shootout. It was wild! Albanese also made his mark in the legendary Goodfellas. Playing Henry Hill's crooked lawyer, he flashed one of the widest grins on screen. Of course, we can't forget his role on The Sopranos. As Uncle Pat, he owned a farm where, let's say, Tony's crew buried some of their problems. Frank Albanese left a lasting legacy when he passed away there on October 5th, 2015, from prostate cancer. Hey, Sopranos fans, today we're talking about Robert Patrick, the man who gave us the unforgettable T-1000 in Terminator 2 Judgment Day. You'd think playing a liquid metal killing machine would make an actor stick to one type of role, but Patrick took a different route. After scaring the pants off everyone in Terminator 2, he jumped into everything from low-budget thrillers like The Cool Surface to heavyweight films like Copland with De Niro and Stallone. And let's not forget his TV gigs. He nailed it as Davey Scatino, the down-on-his-luck gambler in The Sopranos, and as Agent Doggett in The X-Files. Patrick also teamed up with Eastwood for Flags of Our Fathers and George Clooney in The Men Who Stare at Goats. This guy has worked with some serious talent and built a rep as one of the most dedicated actors out there. On the personal side, Patrick married actress Barbara Hooper in 1990, and they've got two kids. In a candid moment, he revealed he struggled with substance abuse early in his career. Lately, you've seen Robert in shows like 1923, Reacher, Goliath, The Walking Dead, and movies like Honest Thief. Kids go to the same school together. Now let's talk about Chris Caldovino, 
the man behind Billy Leotardo. Born and raised in Brooklyn, Chris started his acting journey at the Gene Frankel Theater in NYC. In 2004, Chris landed the role of Billy Leotardo on The Sopranos. Whatever happened there? Chris's career didn't stop there. He snagged roles in various TV shows and films, including The Good Guys and Brooklyn Rules. He even worked with Martin Scorsese in the Oscar-nominated The Wolf of Wall Street. On HBO's Boardwalk Empire, Chris played Tonino Sandrelli for three seasons, earning a SAG nomination. More recently, Chris has been busy with guest roles on popular shows like Castle, The Haves and the Have-Nots, and Tommy. He also appeared in the mob comedy Made in Chinatown, featuring several Sopranos alumni. Fans of American Horror Story might recognize him from season 10, and he's now a recurring guest star on the hit series Tulsa King. 47. He was a f kid. Remember the fascinating Oksana Lada, who you might remember as Arena Tony Soprano's needy mistress? Born in Ukraine, Oksana originally studied to be an economist before moving to the U.S. at 20. With her striking Slavic looks, she first dipped her toes into modeling. But soon, the acting bug bit her. After studying drama in both Ukraine and the U.S., she found her way onto our screens as Arena on The Sopranos. And let's be real, her character brought a whole new level of drama to Tony's life, didn't she? If you think juggling mob business is tough, try adding a demanding mistress into the mix. But Oksana's talents don't stop there. She's fluent in four languages, English, Ukrainian, Russian, and Polish. She also made waves in New York theater, receiving praise for her roles. And if you're a fan of Orange is the New Black, you might have spotted her as Yulia. She even made a memorable appearance on 30 Rock as a wedding dress saleswoman. Plus, she was one of Hollywood's few at Donald Trump's inauguration ball, alongside Caitlyn Jenner. What you want me to do? Tony, please. I miss you so much. Will Janowitz has a fascinating background. His parents, Catherine from Slovakia and James from Germany, both fled Europe during World War II. Growing up on the Upper West Side, Will honed his acting chops at the University of North Carolina School of the Arts. Before landing his role on The Sopranos, Will worked briefly as Mary Louise Parker's personal assistant. He kicked off his acting career with a small part in George Washington. His portrayal of Finn on The Sopranos, though, remains a fan favorite, embodying the humor and horror of stumbling into a crime family. Beyond The Sopranos, Will's career includes indie films like Backseat and voice work in Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories. In 2009, he joined Ang Lee's Taking Woodstock, donning a blonde wig and mustache to play Chip Monk. He even took on historical figures, portraying Leo Frank in The People v. Leo Frank. Will's versatility continued with roles in Mad Men, Louie, and Boardwalk Empire, where he played the infamous Jaime Weiss. He also appeared in films like H and TV series like Gotham. Vito was blowing the security guard. Son of a <laughs> Remember Frank John Hughes, who played Walden Vinyl's season of our favorite show? Born in the Bronx, Hughes got his big break as Wild Bill Garner in Band of Brothers. But before making it big, Hughes studied jazz composition at Berkeley and even had his poetry published in the New York Quarterly. When he wasn't moving furniture to support his family, he was building his acting chops in films like Lonely in America and TV shows like Players with Ice-T. Hughes then became a staple in crime dramas, landing recurring roles in 24 and, of course, The Sopranos. In 2011, Hughes co-wrote and starred in Leave, followed by writing The Dark Tourist in 2012. His script, Pox Americana, made it to the prestigious Blacklist in 2013. Recently, Hughes played Frank Sinatra in The Offer and is set to appear in Pep, produced by Leonardo DiCaprio's Appian Way. Pick him up. You pick him up. Let's talk about the life and career of Paul Herman, the guy who brought Beansy to life on The Sopranos. Born and raised in Brooklyn, Herman started acting a bit later than most, with his first screen roles coming in his mid-30s. You might recognize Herman from his roles in big hits like Once Upon a Time in America, Heat, and American Hustle. He had this knack for popping up in movies with Robert De Niro, from Goodfellas and The Irishman to Silver Linings Playbook. Aside from The Sopranos, Herman also appeared in another HBO hit, Entourage, playing Marvin Vincent Chase's accountant. Herman's career wasn't just limited to the screen. In the 90s, he and his brother Charlie ran the Columbus Cafe, a popular spot across from Lincoln Center, frequented by actors, ballet dancers, and yes, even wise guys. Paul passed away on March 29, 2022, at the age of 76, leaving behind a legacy of memorable roles and a career that brought a slice of New York life to screens big and small. You Parmesan sandwich. You.
Let's explore the journey of Vitaly Baganov, who you might recall as Valerie the Russian from The Sopranos. Born in St. Petersburg, Baganov initially pursued a career in astronomy. But after four years of stargazing, he decided to switch focus. Four years later, he emerged with an acting degree. He then ventured into Soviet cinema before making the bold move to the United States in 1991. In the U.S., his distinctive presence quickly found its niche. On The Sopranos, Baganov's portrayal of the Russian in episodes like Pine Barrens and To Save Us All from Satan's Power was nothing short of memorable. His role as the diehard Valerie, who finds himself entangled in the chaotic fallout from a botched hit, showcased his ability to add depth to his characters with a unique blend of menace and charm. Baganov's talents extend beyond the world of TV. He also appeared in Salt. In this film, Baganov took on the role of a Russian president. In addition to his work on The Sopranos and Salt, Baganov voiced Ray Bulgarin in GTA 4. Guy was an interior decorator. His house looked like shit. You might remember Tim Daly, though he's more widely recognized for his role as Joe Hackett in the long-running sitcom Wings, Daly has had quite an eclectic career. Born into an acting dynasty, Tim was practically destined for the stage. Before he was making audiences laugh as the straight-laced Joe Hackett, Daly's career had a rocky start. He broke out in Barry Levinson's debut film Diner, but then found himself in a slew of TV movies and less-than-memorable series. But Wings gave him the breakthrough he needed, setting the stage for more TV roles and notable guest appearances. While Daly made a name for himself on television, he's had some notable moments on the big screen as well, with roles in The Object of My Affection and Basic. Despite these efforts, TV remained his stronghold. His role in The Sopranos was a memorable highlight. Despite a high-profile marriage to actress Amy Van Nostrand, which ended in divorce, Daly's personal life has been just as eventful. He even climbed Mount Kilimanjaro in 2012. It's a f***ing Emmy! If you're the Sopranos fan, you probably remember Joe Santos as Angelo Garipi. But did you know his journey to Hollywood stardom was anything but typical? Joe's early life was marked by hardship and a slew of blue-collar jobs. After a stint in the military and a brief semi-pro football career, Santos decided to pursue drama. He started with small roles in TV and film, like The Obscure Naked City and a few of his cousin Joseph W. Sarno's films. His big break came with Panic in Needle Park, thanks to a push from his friend Al Pacino. From there, Joe landed roles in several gritty 70s crime dramas and TV shows, including a memorable turn as Lieutenant Dennis Becker on The Rockford Files. The 80s saw him in lighter fare, with roles as a divorced dad in Me and Max and Paul Rodriguez's father in A.K.A. Pablo. Despite his prolific TV work, it was his role in The Sopranos that brought him a new wave of recognition. Joe Santos passed away on March 18th, 2016, at the age of 84. Get out! Get out! <laughs> you might remember Nick Emmett Tarabay as Matouche, a gritty pusher who added a distinct edge to the show from 2001 to 2004. While Matouche wasn't the central character, his role certainly enriched the series. After high school, Tarabay made his way to New York. There, he balanced working as a high-end clothing salesman for brands like Hugo Boss and Gucci with acting studies at T. Schreiber Studio. He also performed in off-Broadway productions, laying the groundwork for his future career. By 2004, he was off to Los Angeles, where he trained under Larry Moss and made his mark in Danny and the Deep Blue Sea. So what happened next? Tarabay's career gained significant traction with standout roles. He played Asher in Spartacus, a scheming gladiator, and took on a Klingon officer role in Star Trek Into Darkness. Fans of superhero series will recognize him as Captain Boomerang in Arrow. His versatility also shines through in Burn Notice, The Expanse, and even in the video game Anthem. Most recently, he's brought the villain Eclipso to life in Stargirl. Can you give me the thing? Subscribe to Vano VHS and hit the notification bell. Meanwhile, check out our video on what really happened to Tony Soprano in the last episode, or find out who's the best boss, capo, soldier, and associate in The Sopranos. Don't miss out.